let's start talking about boundary value problems. Now, boundary value problems um, are kind of like an intro to partial differential equations. Uh, you'll notice what I've written here. Uh, this is an example of a boundary value problem, and they're very similar to IVPs or initial value problems. Um, you'll just notice that I'm given two different initial conditions for y. Uh, so those are like the boundary conditions. But I'm going to solve this more or less the same way you did when you first learned second order differential equations. So since this is equal to zero, it's homogeneous. So I can just look for the characteristic equation. Um, so it's r squared plus 2 equals zero. And I can solve this, not too hard, subtract 2 from both sides. Um, and I'll take the square root of both sides. So it looks like r is going to be, well, this is, this is an imaginary thing. So I'll write 0 plus or minus the square root of 2i. So if you remember, when we get um, imaginary roots, of the characteristic equation, I've got to do the sine and cosine thing, right? So our our general solution would be like c1 e to the 0. I'm not going to write e to the 0 because it's 1, but it'll be cosine of square 2 t plus c2 sine square root of 2 t. So if you've learned everything you need to learn about um, second order differential equations, this comes as no surprise to you. And this is all just very, uh, very similar, very straightforward. So now I'm just going to solve for my c1 or c2, right? This is my general solution. I want my specific solution. So if I plug in 0 for t, I better get 1. So this says that 1 has to equal c1 uh, cosine of 0 is 1 plus, well, sine of 0 is 0, so this would be plus 0. So it looks like c1 is 1. Okay, um, and I also know that if I plug in pi, I'm going to get 0. So let me make a second line here. I get 0 if I plug in pi, and remember that we just found c1 to be 1, so I'm going to write that 1 cosine of square root of 2 pi plus c2 sine square root 2 pi. Now I can solve for c2, so I'm not even going to bother writing times 1. If I subtract cosine, the minus cosine of square root 2 pi, sorry, this is an ugly number, equals c2 sine square root 2 pi. Now if I divide both sides by sine, I get a minus cosine square root 2 pi over a sine square root 2 pi. Hey, would you look at that? Cosine over sine, that's cotangent square root 2 pi. I don't know what that number is. Plug it into the calculator uh, if you want to know. So that means that our specific solution to this, uh, this was our general solution. And if I plug in 1, the value of 1 for C1, and if I plug in my new value that I just got for C2, well, my value for C2 was minus cotangent of square root 2 pi, and that was in front of a sine square root 2 t. So this is the answer to this boundary value problem. Very similar to when you learned second order differential equations, uh, except the initial conditions are given to you in a bit of a different way. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave a comment, and uh, feel free to check out my website, brythemathguy.com, for more help. Thanks.